Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We are going to go over the history of text generators up to the recent release GPT-4 and look at the reinforcement learning from human feedback, learning approach that uh, child GPT uses to the understand. Okay. We are going to go over the... Um... Uh, and our amazing speakers, Eugene Kolker, PhD, EVP, Global Services, Director IANMA, Director Client Success Accelerator at DataArt, Dmitry Baikov, Team and Teach uh, Science Lead at DataArt, and uh, Mikola Dubnik, IANMA experts at DataArt. Colleagues, the virtual microphone and the stage is yours. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Alina, for introduction. Uh, that's Dimitri speaking. So welcome everyone uh, on our webinar. And uh, please meet Jean and Kola. And uh, let's see our deck and start our small journey into AI thinking in a nutshell. So we would like to start from uh, the brief history of AI and generative AI. And uh, uh, then uh, we wanted to explain how large language models can think. And uh, that's we will do with uh, Langchain, uh, the tool set for doing gr really great things with uh, LLMs and with prompt engineering. And then we'll speak a bit more about how we in data art use generative AI and specifically about data art AI center of excellence AI platform. So I'm happy to pass the word to Eugene Kolker to start with the brief history of AI. Thank you, Dmitry. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Mikola, can you move to the next slide, please? So we're going to cover very, very briefly history of AI and generative AI. By the way, this slide was generated with uh, help of um, uh, one of the most advanced tools to generate decks, uh, gamma.app. Highly recommend that to you. Let's go to next slide. Uh, earlier, I was uh, chatting with ChatGPT, and my first question was when AI was born. That was the question on the top, and that was a decent. Uh, almost correct answer from Jet GPT. Um, everybody thinks it was introduced this term in 1956 uh, at Dartmouth Co Conference and uh, the person who introduced it was John McCarthy. Uh, actually, that's almost true. Um, I did know the correct answer, so I went to second iteration if you can move to the next slide. Second iteration question on the top, and the answer in blue is correct answer from ChatGPT. Actually, John McCarthy, he was below 30 back then. In 1955, uh, together with three collaborators mentioned on previous slide, uh, submitted grant application to Rockefeller Foundation to have uh, a famous Dartmouth conference, which happened a year later. So actually, AI as a term uh, is around for 68 years. It's very long. Uh, let's go to next slide. Uh, both AI and generative AI, which we're going to define next slide, is uh, um, um, both these approaches are extremely um, useful, especially nowadays. Um, some people consider that on November 30th of last year, there was so-called chat GPT re revolution. I would concur with that. And uh, earlier today, when we talked for a couple minutes with Dmitry, I, I recollected that 25 years ago, um, one of my mentors told me uh, which he learned from the very top of Microsoft company. Back then, I lived and uh, worked in Seattle. And the message was the following. AI will not take your job, but person 
um, comfortable with AI might do that. Mm, I think it's ex extremely exciting time right now, but it's also true right now. Until very, very recently, like half a year ago, that would be too far fetched consideration. But nowadays, you need to be very uh, attentive to what is happening with a AI, generative AI. Uh, let's go to next slide and the large language models, which ChatGPT is one of those. So again, here is introduction of generative AI. And this slide uh, was uh, generated with uh, gamma.app as well. Previous slide, um, gamma.app helped to generate and then Mary helped to beautify it. But substance is here, okay? A generative AI is specific type of AI um, and uh, for um, daily usage, um, we are getting there right now. Of course, it has a lot of limitations like we humans. Sometimes it's not correct. Sometimes it hallucinates. Sometimes is not giving you what a correct answer should be, even if it knows it, like in previous example. Uh, but, you know, still with all these limitations is extremely, extremely powerful. Let's go to the next slide. Especially uh, nowadays, um, large language models, they are extremely powerful. Um, and uh, this is a diagram not generated by gamma.app, but by another company, which shows some history of large language models. Um, again, ChatGPT is one of those models, extremely powerful. So um, welcome to world of generative AI and large language models. Uh, Jim, I think the uh, floor is now yours. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much, Jean, and this a great intro, and I encourage everyone uh, from the audience, if you have any questions, write it down in chat, and we'll answer them in the end of our presentation. And uh, thank you very much, Jean, and now I would like to pass the word to Kolya, who will dive deeper into what ChatGPT and is and what is Langchain specifically. Thank you, Dima. Uh, hi, everyone. So now uh, let's talk about uh, what is uh, ChatGPT uh, and uh, how we got it. So first that I want to say uh, that uh, inside of ChatGPT and StructGPT, we have only uh, same GPT-3 model uh, that uh, without any magic that just uh, predict uh, a next word uh, for a given sequence. Uh, so in uh, our future discussion, we will use GPT-3 like our base large language model because ChatGPT is built on top of it and uh, it's most breakthroughs product that use large language model. So how we get it? After release of uh, GPT-3 uh, architecture, uh, OpenAI start working on instruct GPT models uh, that just take the same uh, GPT-3 trained model and apply to it reinforcement learning from human feedback. Uh, after this manipulation, they got a really powerful model, but a bit with unsafety output that can harm a user, like in times of uh, Diago GPT. So how we can understand we can use this, we can't use this model for any products. So after some time, OpenAI applied safety to prevent uh, uh, harm out uh, outputs from the model. And uh, we got a chart GPT. So let's dive deeper. Uh, what is reinforcement learning from human feedback? Why it's helped with OpenAI to get uh, chat GPT product and why it's the future of uh, any <clears throat> large language models for the next couple of years. So basically, let's start from reinforcement learning to revise what is it. Uh, it's just an approach for training your model to do some actions in a uh, given environment. So for example, your environment is a room and task in this environment just move uh, 
things around it and so model will be train uh, will be do some actions inside of this environment receiving output from environment and uh, give this output to the policy that will update uh, model ways to do better interaction with uh, in uh, within environments so basically uh, reinforcement learning has uh, three object is policy update algorithm models that do some actions and environment where the section applied so how OpenAI applied these technologies to uh, large uh, language models? Uh, so firstly, uh, they trained uh, default GPT-3 uh, model on the pile data set. Uh, so after that, they got a pre-trained model like uh, it, do, it do that before for GPT-2, GPT-1, and any other uh, LLM. Uh, after that starts their novel approach. So as we understand in uh, reinforcement learning we have some things that update our weights uh, based on model interaction with environment here uh, open open ai uh, take uh, <clears throat> uh, take a prompt data set pass it to language model uh, and get uh, a virus output for each prompt then they ask it a group of analysts to rank uh, these outputs uh, from better to worse uh, and uh, get uh, have a new data set with uh, model uh, outputs ranking so now we need to create a model that will uh, give for this ranking a score uh, and they just uh, collected these rankings, uh, converted them using error to uh, scores and put it to, to this model. So they got a model that by giving outputs for an each prompt, uh, create, create a score. If the score higher, so this determine that uh, for human, it will be a good answer for this prompt. And then start uh, reinforcement learning from human feedback. We take a, initial our model so it's uh gpt3 in this example uh and make a copy of it for initial model we will froze uh all uh, weights uh, for it for our copy we uh, unfroze uh, all ways to be able to train them and change these ways uh so we then we have a data set of our prompts pass this prompt throws uh, each of this model put uh and uh an output of a, uh, each model to Kuba Kleiber divergence to create a shift penalty to not create a bias of our models. And then uh, output of uh, our unfrozen model, we go, we put to reward model. This uh, output of our shift penalty and uh, ranking from reward model, we uh, put this information into policy update algorithm that uh, just stand standard uh, PPO uh, algorithm from reinforcement learning. Uh, it uh, updates weights of uh, unfrozen model, and that's it. So uh, the, in this way, train it uh, GPT instruct GPT and chart GPT and GPT-4. So by this uh, ranking uh, from reward models that we got, uh, we can improve our model uh, output to be better uh, for, for human experts group that ranked all uh, outputs for the given data set. So now um, with an information, how, how, how it's work, how we get so powerful model, uh, let's try to understand uh, how, how to make it sync. So if you look on this diagram, uh, we we can see that uh, human during solving some engineering problems uh, use a, a lot of uh, some actions in the reasoning, like step-by-step -step formatting and solution, interaction with other humans, gathering feedback, collecting information from different souls, uh, from different sources uh, to solve only one task. Uh, our language models are also powerful, but when we try to solve some mess word problems, uh, fact checking operation and so on, uh, regarding to that it's uh, just a model that predict next word for, for a sequence, uh, we will get sometimes not, uh, not, <clears throat> not a good, uh, outputs and, uh, 
the community start to find a way how to make the AI think, how to add here reasoning, acting, and so on. So let's start with the first uh, step, uh, this step-by-step -step, uh, reasoning. And this approach provided to us by Chain of Thought. Uh, it's, an, uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's a research made by Google Brain team uh, to how to add this reasoning step uh, to our model. As you can see on the screen, by default uh, prompting to large language model, we just provide a question and receive an answer. And with some simple mass operation, uh, mass word problems, sometimes it it, uh, it can throw a wrong uh, number as an answer because model just try to predict the next word in the sequence. And from this part of the task, uh, the output is correct, but for, from the logic part of this task, we got an incorrect number. To solve this, uh, they provide to us a way to add uh, to initial prompt, not only uh, a question uh, and sample of answer, but step-by-step uh, -step reasoning how to get this answer. So we can see on uh, this example that we provide a model uh, a a little told uh, what she how how need to think to get an correct answer, and then we provide a question, and model provide to us uh, its thoughts about how how it solves the task, and we got a correct answer. So you can find more information about this concept uh, about this concept in original paper. Uh, the link provided uh, inside of this slide. So let's move to the comparison of chain of thought to default prompting. Uh, how we can see um, in this in this comparison, we use uh, authors use uh, mass problems data set or all, all these three data set GSM 8K, MAWPS, and SVAMP is it just a data sets that contain mass problems from graduate school and differentiate in the, between each of them only by complexity. Uh, it's only one difference between each of these data sets. How we can see for SVAMP, uh, GPT and PAO model uh, using chain of thoughts outperform per, uh, prior supervised best model trained only to solve this task. Uh, so th this approach is interesting for us, but he have some uh, uh, cons, uh, and it's uh, this cons that sometimes fact checking uh, and tools uh, can be <clears throat> wrong due to model will also predict them like trying to solve task uh, to get the next word for a given uh, sequence. And to solve this uh, problem, we have also another research from uh, Google Brain team, synergizing reasoning and acting in large language, large language models. So this approach provides to us uh, a way how to solve problem of chain of thought when model create wrong, uh, wrong thoughts about solving of task due to unknown uh, correct facts and correct observation to use them in uh, is in this chain of tools. And here the um, solution for this problem is just providing uh, to our model uh, a way to interact with the environment. For example, with Google search. How you can see on this uh, example, the question was what uh, another uh, device can be controlled by uh, Apple remote technology. And as we see uh, on the slide, uh, if you use only chain of thoughts, so only reasoning, uh, it will create wrong uh, thought from its knowledge uh, and give to us a wrong answer. If we use reasoning plus, plus acting, so our model firstly decides that he needs to uh, get an information, what is Apple remote, and the action here will be just Google Apple remote. Then from observation, from output from Google, uh, we collect information that is uh, originally designed to uh, for front row uh, media center program. Then uh, next thought uh, is understand what is front row, uh, get information from Google. And after that, with latest observation, when we know all facts about our question, we, we uh, model can provide uh correct answer so this is the main uh concept of uh, this research also you can 
check uh, it deeper in original paper and comparing it with the file prompting and chain of thoughts on hotpot QA data set that uh, provide to us some reasoning question when we need to compare facts and uh, compare some uh, axioms about data and question what we have, we can see that uh, reasoning uh, plus acting approach uh, is slightly better than chain of thoughts. And uh, if we combine them, uh, chain of thoughts and uh, react, we can get even better result. But for this example, for uh, question answering on hotpot, uh, supervised uh, models uh, for now is the best uh, choice, but we have a good result using models that not train it on this data and not train it to solve these uh, problems. Uh, and now knowing uh, these approaches, how, how to deal with um, uh, with different prompting technique like chain of thoughts and uh, react uh, let's talk about on chain uh, because it's uh, like a hugging face uh, some time ago for a language model but uh, it for interaction with uh, it, with this model it combines inside of it have all models for provide to react agents that will be able to interact with the environment it provide to you uh, memories indexes provide to you uh, ability to use uh, vector database and manipulate data inside it. So it's very powerful tool that in a couple of line of codes can create you an application using latest powerful uh, language model. So now from this uh, part, let's look on uh, link chain uh, and how how it work. So um, here we got uh a demo notebook prepared for this uh presentation we will share it after this uh, it talk so uh, the start of this notebook is just collecting all requirements for this uh demo you will need uh open ai library and chain uh, tesseract uh, detectron and uh chroma chroma db and pinecon uh, api so after installing all these dependencies, you also need to set up open API key, uh, GCP project uh, API key and uh, Google custom search engine ID to be able to share with your agent um, <clears throat> Google search abilities. And let's start. So how you can see the first benefit of uh, link chain to prompt anything to your model, you will need only a couple of roles with the initializing of your model. So in our case, it will be text DaVinci 003. It's basically uh, the largest text uh, variant of uh, GPT-3 architecture. Uh, and the next one, which is interesting benefit also is uh, prompt template. How you can see, you can put uh, all information inside of template and create some changing fields. Uh, in our case, this provides to us to create prompt like this, so top three ML ideas for 2023. And we can see an output from a uh, given model. Also, um, link chain uh, have a, a few short prompt template when you can uh, give uh, to your model not only questions but uh, also an answer to show what uh, what you expect from your model. In this case, we creating uh, using few short uh, prompt template. Uh, an agent uh, that will uh, provide to you sarcastic jokes on your uh questions like what is the meaning of life uh and uh, let's move on to chains that provided by uh, this uh, library so as you mentioned before we have only um, uh, we pass to our model only one request in the, at the same time so uh, if we will not use chain, we will pass all of these questions uh, independently by four times. But chain provides you an ability to put all this uh, uh, information in one request and, and get a structured uh, output. So now let's take about uh, let's look on uh, dynamic chains and how React uh, approach uh, works inside of uh, link chain. 
So first of all, uh, on chain provide to you a, a big uh, list of tools that can be used by your agent to interact with the environment. So uh, the interesting from from this is like uh, Python repo is your model can uh, interact with a Python shell also. Uh, Google search API, uh, Paul Mess uh, for solving some uh, complex uh, mess problems, and so on. You can find uh, the list of all these uh, APIs uh, and tools inside of this notebook. So we will use uh, Google search in our example and Python shell. So we create a zero short React agent and asking our questions, it uh, looks like, can you print the square root of the distance in miles from New York to, to the current capital of, of USA? Uh, so um, what our agent must do? So firstly, he must determine we, where, what is the capital of uh, USA now, then uh, find a distance between uh, New York and current capital. And after that, provide to us uh, code that print uh, square root of this distance. How we can see agent does it uh, correct. So he get uh, current action that he need to search distance from the uh, New York to Washington DC, get correct uh, distance, then uh, try to write a code. But the first attempt was uh, with an error because we don't import it mass library and then uh, without any our interruption or help uh, to this agent uh, we just uh, agent uh, by itself uh, uh, fix it this small bug and uh, provide to us a correct answer for our question and finish it uh, it's uh, his work so uh, using this uh, technology, you can uh, almost build an application or using the only one chain. So now let's look at an example with uh, Chrome DB question answering. We will use for this also one chain, open AI embeddings from text DaVinci model, and uh, we will also use uh, Chrome DB to store our uh, text data and our vectors of embedding for this text data. For the text data, we will use essays data set with a couple of essays or some um, different topics and small abstract from uh, medium paper uh, about bird topic. So uh, firstly, uh, one cool feature that provide you um, on chain is a text splitter. You can split your document by uh, chunk size by characters by pages uh, it depends uh, basically on your document uh, it's what like uh, looks like the output of this uh, splitter so you can see this is a text uh, split it by chunk uh, of 1000 characters and uh, also we have metadata uh, which source of this uh, text was so then we create an embeddings for our text database supported to um, Chrome DB, and after that we we just query in it uh, using the chain so our question uh, will be what is topic model and we receive a correct answer from our uh, document and receive a document where this answer can be found uh, also another uh, example how to use uh, how to create vector question answering uh, but with PDF and PyCon DB. So uh, I, I guess a lot of you at least once uh, seen an attention is all you need paper. So we uploaded this paper to our uh, environment on chain using Detecron split it uh, this paper to uh independent uh pages uh divided by chunk size of 1000 uh, characters then we create again an embedding uh, for each of these pages upload it to pinecon and uh, asking our question what is attention firstly pinecon provide to us uh, where uh, answer on this question can be in which document and then with the same uh Question we uh, go to and chain and adding to question our PyCon result and getting that attention is a mechanism used in the sequence modeling 
and so on from our paper. So basically, uh, that's all. I give a word to Dima, uh, and uh, he will uh, he will explain how we use these technologies in our AI platform. Yeah, thank you very much, Kole. Before we go into that, I want to uh, reemphasize on a couple of points Kole made before. So, uh, generative uh, GPT-3 was there for a couple of years already. We knew about this technology. It was predicting the next word, but no one found a lot of uh, interest in it uh, and business applications. Since the success of ChatGPT, a number of different tools started to evolve. And as you see, uh, Kolya very, very briefly uh, walk you through what LangChain can do and how it can move only prompt engineering with generate me this text to totally new level where you can work with business applications, apply it to long sequences, apply it to search above your knowledge base, ask the questions to the documents, receive the answer in a human manner. So you can build your own Google by your data or your own chat GPT by your data and get the answers as someone explains to you. And this is only the beginning because with LangChain, for instance, you can connect different data sources. You can connect Google, Wikipedia, uh, mathematics uh, from Wolfram Alpha, Python, and ChatGPT. And ChatGPT will know everything about these sources and can apply to these sources if needed and aggregate the information. And what is more important, it can reiterate again as a as even more improvement it can reiterate on its own answers and it can check its own answers which is very important and if you heard something about chat gpt plugins this is like open source analogy which was there even before they announced it so i i highly encourage everyone to check these instruments to try it out, it's very simple. You can write your own agents, your own plugins, and extend uh, work with generative texture models. And uh, this is only the, the second stage after generative AI. Now there are a lot, uh, even, even more uh, complex uh, things like AutoGPT or Baby AGI, the open source projects which are doing similar things uh, they want to explain to a machine how to think, and they are basically autonomous agents that can order you pizza or buy you an iPhone if you write the comments, or they can generate the wholesale strategy or uh, the marketing strategy or some content plan for you or the code. And they are working iteratively on thinking, setting the task, doing this task, replicating and uh, reflecting on how it was done, and then like reiterating on those. So they're asynchronous and autonomous and you can scale them. And there are a lot of those AI autonomous bots which are already around the internet. So this is the future we are going to with the generative AI and generative models. I uh, wanted today to explain what we do in DataArt and how it is uh, related to uh, generative AI. So we ha have a number of internal accelerators slash products. And one of them is DataArt AI platform where we applied the generative AI. It's one of the places actually we, we applied generative AI. So the platform by its own, it, it is targeted to data science, routine automation, to help to improve business, to integrate all of the best data science machine learning ideas uh, into one business process, to enhance this business process, keep track of experiments, keep track of the data sets, and overall move quicker from assumptions to real results for business. And uh, now we will see the video of how it looks like and what benefits it gives to the users.
Today, many companies use data science and artificial intelligence to make people's lives better. Smart recommendations, taxi price and loan estimation, insurance plan approval can be done in a matter of seconds. All of this is possible with AI automation. But, how can you know that your company is ready to do the same? Do you have the data from clients? Do you want to improve your business? Yes and yes, you seem to be ready. And we are here to help you. Our platform is designed to make your data science journey easier and the most efficient. With a no-code stepper approach, you will simply input data sets, select a prediction target, and wait a bit for the system to find the best model fit for your data. The results page will display plots and reports that will give you a clear understanding of your data. You can even switch from no code to code and generate open source Python code for the pipeline. The dataset and experiment management pages will help you always find the datasets and keep your experiment results organized. Using our platform, you can find valuable insights from tabular, textual, and time series data. You can easily build the models from multiple relational data sources and deploy them for use in production when ready. With our platform, you will automate solving of your business challenges by moving up to four times faster in new data science projects, staying cost-effective. With fast and traceable experimenting, you can build three times more projects in the same time frame and increase the average project prototype success. Start your data-driven journey today with the AutoML platform. Together, we will transform assumptions into actions and take your ideas to the next level. Yeah, thank you, Kolya. So th this is brief overview of what, what we had. And uh, as you see, it's uh, the platform which is data science oriented. It uses so-called experiments, which data scientists do a lot or did a lot in the past uh, for merging data sets, for building the models, working with different types of data like time series, text, table or data. And we developed a set of automated experiments which are covering the uh, clients and the projects where we have the data and when where we want to build the model faster and to select the best model. So there is a set of AutoML tools already there on the market. We have a number of those which automate different things from the data preparation to the model deployment. And with generative AI, we managed to extend this into not only data scientist oriented flows, but into business oriented flows as well. So since the generative AI technology is very uh, easy to comprehend from the business side, we selected a number of business use cases like meeting analysis or uh, data science code generation or plots code generation. And we started to build those. And what we saw that building single screen streamlit applications with clear UI, understandable input, limited set of configs and parameters, it really helps to drive business forward. And now we have more than seven of those and we are extending them even more. So it's a small applications which are built on top of generative AI and which are targeted to business use cases and different business domains. So we not only enhanced our internal product, but we extended it uh, with a totally new functionality which was not there before and which is understandable and explainable and scalable for many of our clients. And why, why do we need this platform overall? Uh, just to quickly speak about summary on the next slide, uh, you will see that by, by our uh, like research, we see the significant time saving up to four times to average AI POC development time. So it's not only about using our platform, it's about using AutoML tools, boosters, accelerators, and it leads to fast experiments, fast hypothesis checking, and with, with the popcorns concept, with the small applications, we, we are having the first results of the business use case in, in just a couple of days. We have the web version, we have the SDK version, we have the data set management and experiment tracking features, and that's all is focused to increase the main business metric. This platform is very helpful inside 
the company and for our clients. And now with generative AI, it will be helpful even more. So that's it today from our side. And thank you for your attention. We'll be happy to answer any of your questions. And uh, I will go in the chat to see whether we have any. So uh, I see the question from Matt. Uh, and Matt asks, uh, does DataArt have thoughts uh, regarding what is happening in the ecosystem beyond OpenAI? Are there other tools coming that may similarly be as powerful, impactful as ChatGPT? Thanks. So, Kola, what do you think about that? Mm, I think we in nearest future we will receive a lot of tools uh, that will be maybe a lot of powerful than uh, latest uh, OpenAI, ChatGPT. So, also we have a lot of uh, open. We have a lot of uh, a big open source community, uh, and uh, as we all know, we have GPT Neo, GPT Neo J that will allow you to build your own uh G G gpt like model so also uh not so long ago um, microsoft released a framework to build your own uh transformers training with reinforcement learning from human feedback and microsoft open ai azure azure service so in nearest future not only open ai will provide to us a coolest model yeah, I agree. And I would like to add that, for instance, Databricks company had a great use case of releasing uh, Dolly, uh, which is uh, basically a generative model, uh, which was in the first version built on top of Llama, which is Facebook version of LLM. But in the second iteration, they gathered the data set inside their company and they trained with reinforcement learning, they trained uh, the new model, which actually outperforms Llama uh, uh, on on couple of tasks. So there are a number of those, uh, as well as Google has its own Palm or Bard, which is a product like ChatGPT, and Palm is more like uh, GPT three kind of model. So we see that there are some uh, like competitors. But for now, they are not so open to use uh, the like ChatGPT, and the the OpenAI services, as Kola said correctly, are integrated into Azure. So as soon as you want to use it inside your client's infrastructure, or as soon as client want to send some PHI data or private data into their model, you are going to use it, the the API on Microsoft. So there are no uh, open source alternative because Llama cannot be used commercially. So uh, soon there will be a, a lot more of those models. We are taking a look at that. And uh, for now, we see that in production, uh, GPT, GPT-3, 4, uh, one of the best models which can be used. OK, uh, so let's move on. Thank you for the great question, Matt. Uh, Alexander writes, uh, yesterday I fed all the 1,100 pages of the book, Artificial Intelligence, to that. Yeah, so you can also uh, even fed uh, a books to, with the link chain, and you can ask the questions to the books. You can create your library uh, and uh, search very fast. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's all available with uh, link chain. So the next question from Kazi, is it possible to generalize and automate the conversation performance from Facebook ads based on pixels, for example, using data art automap? So let me uh, decompose this question. So generalize and automate the conversion performance. Uh, if, if you're talking about can we predict the performance from ads by uh, images? Uh, can we predict CTR or some revenue? Yes, we can do that uh, as soon as we have the data set to train on. 
So generative AI uh, can guesstimate, for instance, you can ask ChatGPT, hey, here is the image, describe it into the words and ask uh, how much money it can bring. But again, it will be just a guesstimate. ChatGPT is not good at doing regression or classification problems, solving those. But you can work with the proprietary data and with or with open source data, open source models, uh, classical machine learning to build something that could do uh, the conversion performance assessment, uh, whatever it means for you, like revenue estimation or something else. Uh, Kole, would you like to add something here? Uh... Actually, no, we can provide, uh, <laughs> at least that we can provide popcorn that can uh, do this job if uh, we will get a bit more information. Yeah, yeah, so uh, the data is important here. Okay, the next question is from Lorena. I'd like to ask you about the ownership of the code generated by ChatGPT. Could it bring any legal conflict if we use it to generate code for our projects? It's a great question, uh, Orena. Uh, Kolya, what do you think about that? Mm, I guess uh, the code generated by OpenAI uh, models and any other language model can, can be just like open source code with open license. So it's not must, it must not create any uh, legal problem for you. Yeah, I think the same. And you have the tools like uh, GitHub uh, Copilot. Codex, Copilot, sorry, uh, which basically use the same technology and generate the code for you. You can use it inside your project. Uh, and uh, you can use the text generated uh, via ChatGPT as well. So it seems like the code and text are the same artifacts, right? So ChatGPT do not Mm, how how to say uh, it cannot understand whether this code secure or not secure right so it can just generate statistically what it think the right answer is so you have always to check you have always to understand what the code you have to understand the background and the language for you to use it and the second point you shouldn't use your project internal code and feed it directly into ChatGPT because ChatGPT is public free preview version where your prompt may be seen by open AI people for training or fine tuning. So that's why if you are doing vice versa, you are um, showing some risks to your uh, code base and it may result into some leakage which already happened with uh, giants like Samsung, uh, and I think that some more. So that's what I would not recommend. If you want, it's be it's better to use the tools specifically for coding, or it's better to apply to Azure uh, OpenAI services and ask for their help with if you have specific need. Okay. So the next question, uh, how can I integrate the power of DALI and Midjourney in data art automel? So that is some task that can be automated. Yeah, that's that's interesting question. So we are not currently covering the um, image generation task because it's uh, something not, it's something more tricky for business to apply than uh, working with text or table or data. Uh, but for sure, if you have any ideas, uh, feel free to reach uh, us out on LinkedIn or by our email, and we'll be happy to discuss the, your ideas. And if uh, we see the um, great idea, we, we may think of implementing it and work with you on this one. So uh, we are open to any ideas and uh, happy to discuss that. Okay, so the next question. Uh, this one is for you, Kola. Which vector database do you prefer to use with LangChain? Judging from the demo, they are PineCon and ChromaDB, right? Yeah, 
uh, if uh, look on the demo, I will prefer Chrome DB because we don't need anything to set up. It can be easily set up just in your co-op instance. So if uh, if technology is e e so the easier your technology that you need to use, then uh, then less time you need to spend to implement something. So I prefer in that case Chrome DB, but some preference for exactly that we need to use only this uh, vector database. I don't have because these needs can be uh, can can be de can depends on uh, um, what what is your project and how many data do you have. If we had a lot of data, uh, I will prefer a Pinecon because uh, this database will manage all the cluster job uh, and divided my data by clusters. Um, backup of my data and uh, all of this uh, by by itself, and I will use only API. Yeah, and I would add even more that as far as I remember, Langchain has around seven or eight different vector databases available, so you can search the documentation and, for instance, plug in the Elasticsearch as a database. It, it may be done as well, so. Uh, I think that it's worth checking like checking documentation because it's very broad, very verbose, and I highly recommend to check it out. It has a lot of answers to many of your questions. But thank you for the question, Alexander. Let's move on. We have three more questions. Cool. Uh, the question is, are you trying to integrate this with Jira and automate some specific part of workflow? Yes, uh, the, the answer we did. We have a couple of internal projects, which I cannot share a lot about, but they are around how to structure the requirements from the client in the Jira tasks and how to improve specific steps of the Jira workflow. For instance, like tagging of the text tasks or analyzing based on some experience who is the best person to do this task. And uh, we did a couple of POCs with that and even integrated them with Jira. So we had this uh, in life. It's, it was not used by any project. It is not used by any project now, but for sure, uh, Jira as a source of textual information, combining with Pinecone as well, uh, will lead you to um, great knowledge base and great uh, input for your request to ChatGPT or similar models. So uh, yeah, it's a great place to work with. Okay, let's move on. Uh, one important downside of the new generative AI models is they are much harder to interpret and control than traditional generative models. Maybe it's traditional models just. Are efforts underway to overcome these control limitations? Kole, what do you think? Mm. Is it much harder to interpret generative AI and control it than interpret and control traditional models? I think it's uh, say we need to spend same efforts for this one because here now with this language models, it's 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 also a traditional model. We get the benefit of uh, like generative AI for for this model from uh, reinforcement learning from human feedback. So uh, I think we need to spend same efforts. But uh, if we look on some research made it by um, other teams when they place it GPT model uh, inside of some environment, sometimes uh, this model start do some not clear for our, our sections and we need to make the work of this models mu must be moderated all the time. Yeah, I agree. So. I would say that uh, the, the first part about the interpretation, it's like you can interpret it very well because it's text, right? And sometimes interpretation of uh, like time series is much harder. But with control, that, that's true that 
uh, with ChatGPT and these auto autonomous agents, right? You cannot, uh, it's very hard to put the, the high mark. So there is a red line, you cannot cross it because it's, it's up to them. And if we give them the tools, they can use them. And if we give them the bad tools, they will use the bad tools if they decide to. So this generative AI or ChatGPT is just simple classical machine learning on uh, tons of data plus human selection on top of it. And that's what crafted us a great, great tool. And uh, with traditional machine learning, you, with, with statistics, right? You have just, uh, you are not generating something from the noise uh, like these models do. You're generating something based on your internal like assumptions and logic, which was automatically created by uh, the training process. So you, based on statistics, you do some formula and you have this red line. It's heavily visible. You cannot have uh, revenue uh, under zero, right? So the model cannot predict it. You don't, you can, if the, you train the model for 10 classes, you cannot get the 21st, right? So you, you totally see your red line. With generative AI, it's uh, unclear, more unclear and more unseen. That's why we have all these safety complications, uh, responsive AI, ethical AI, and very hard questions, which most of us cannot answer right now. So we have a hope that it will be somehow defined in future. Okay, and I can see the last question from the chat, uh, on the chat from Yuri. Would it be possible to get a copy of a presentation via email or otherwise? I think that it's public, so uh, I don't think it should be a problem. Uh, we will ask our uh, coordinators of the webinar to do this if possible, and uh, with uh, the notebook as well. Okay. Uh, then I see no questions. Uh, let's wait for one more minute. Thank you for the great questions. Uh, we try to answer all of those. And uh, as I said, feel free to find us on LinkedIn. We'll be happy to proceed the conversations and speak about the ML generative AI. Yes, thank you, guys. Thank you, mm, thank you uh, for for your attention. And sure, we'll send a video and presentation to all registrars. Thank you very oh. much. Thank you, Alina. Okay, then have a great end of the day. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you.